materials. So let's go. Um, let's let's take a break out of uh, Blender for a second. Um, mm -hmm. but Dom, we were like, oh, we're, we don't have a whole hour to fill up. Yeah, we've done it. We always do. It's okay. Uh, I'd rather people understand this. So let's let's move. I'm gonna uh, switch over to uh, back to to our uh, web view here, and I'm gonna go to uh, a scene, a typical scene that you might pull from uh, Sketchfab. Like, I want to turn this into a hub scene, and I, I found this thing called House Scene, uh, which looks really cool. It's got a little house and a little kind of cartoony car, and there's a cat sitting on the porch. And one of the things I really liked about this were like these really organic looking like vines going up the the roof. It's got leaves all over the roof. And then it has this tree over here made of a bunch of leaves. And then like even kind of almost like a bush of vines back here going up. Um, this is, uh, again, like I, I usually do, I inspect it first. I go check it out. Is this pretty low poly? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but it does have opacity in it. Um, and that's how they manage to do all the transparent parts. Um, but I know for a fact that when I drag this into hubs, it's not going to give me exactly what I want. And here's what it looks like in hubs. Uh, now, I just dragged the model into this window uh, directly from the... I dragged the Sketchfab link right into this window. And again, it converted it um, from the GLTF, which is really great, into a GLB. Um, sort of looks okay. The vine, uh, looks, Look at that. Not so great there. Yeah, it's going to kind of depend on what angle you're looking Some at Z it. fighting... They call it Z fighting. It's like Z is depth. Um, but really where you're going to see problems are uh, when these start overlapping each other. You can see those those guys want to flicker a lot. But the worst offender is this tree because it's made out of a bunch of... Let's go back real quick. It's made out of... Uh, if I go to wireframe, you know, it's made out of a bunch of cards like this. Now, the Sketchfab renderer handles this stuff really nicely. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what they're built upon or if they did their own proprietary thing, but yeah, I think they have their own render and, 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 you know, the obvious question is like, okay, well, I can Sketchfab render it and hubs can't. Um, so there's different, um, trade-offs you have to make, uh, in terms of performance mostly, um, like there's not really any good general, completely general purpose solutions for transparency, like order independent transparency. Like this is kind of like sort of unsolved problem. Like there a video are game problem. Yeah. yeah there are, um, <laughs> better and worse solutions depending on how much you want to like performance you want to uh plug into it um or or dedicate to it in hubs we just do kind of the, the the fastest most performant thing which is um we do sort objects but i don't know per object level um and we can if you if you um i don't know if you have those images i sent you jim we can like really quickly go over like oh yeah I like why that. why is this a problem to begin with in case you didn't um, notice what's happening on my screen like those vines on the wall because they have transparency in them when they are behind another transparent thing, it has trouble. It basically is discarding uh, the. Yeah, I mean, it's as if here. it's as if there was nothing. Like, if you imagine that you were rendering that um, that thing not in a non-transparent way, like you're rendering that whole plane, right? Um, you would not be able to see the house behind it, and so the house doesn't render because it's like, well, I'm behind something. I'm not going to render at all. Um, unfortunately, the thing that is uh, that it is behind is a transparent thing, but it doesn't fully know that. Um, and that's because it's sorting at the object level. So it's, it's the, this whole scene is a single object. And so it can't say that, okay, this tree is in front of this house. It's just looking at the center of the object. It, it's drawing um, them all at once, right? It can't, it can't say, I'm going to draw this part first and right, then I'll exactly. render this on top of it. And exactly. And if there were separate models, um, they could, but even if they're separate models, you, you can end up with issues with, okay, well, part of this, this plane is in front and part of it is behind. And, and so um, you're always going to have over like have issues with overlapping, even if you, even if you break it down further. Um, but uh, yeah, and these, if you bring are up using, those... and these, and that's how, you know, these are using alpha blend um, right. because yeah, this, alpha clip this, won't problem, have this, this problem is happening. Um, so let's, let's look at your, your image examples. Uh, this one is the back to front one. I think, is that the one you want to see first or the front to back? Uh, yeah, this one is this one is like the the correct case. So it's like okay, what you actually want to do is you want to render each object um, sorted back to front. And so like you see the transparency there looks correct. It's like okay, the the A and the B are overlapping correctly, and you don't see anything weird. Um, this is this is what we want everything to to look like, and we try to sort objects in this way um, so that this happens. But you know, 
a lot of times it's not gonna it's not gonna actually sort fully correctly, and then you're gonna get something that looks more like the second image, which is um, where you end up see it, like you, this is exactly what we see in hubs, right? Like we're seeing through to the background, and the reason this happens is because like when that object renders, um, you know now as the next object comes comes to render, it thinks there's already something there because it's written into the depth buffer, um, which which is how uh, computer graphics or how, how GPUs um, decide whether they should draw something or not, uh, like whether something is in front of something else. I'm giving like a really, really hand wavy uh, hand wavy right. explanation right. here, but like, um, but basically, it thinks there's already something there, so it's not going to draw anything because uh, it's like, okay, well, something's overlapping here, um, and so this is like the exact thing you end up seeing, and um, yeah, so it's just a problem you have to deal with. There are things we could do in hubs to kind of make this happen maybe less if we were willing to, to sacrifice some performance for it. Or um, There are lots of stuff, but bottom line, this is kind of just something you have to think about when you're doing games. This is this is like really common in most engines. You know, If you're making something in Unity or Unreal or, or whatever, by default, unless you do something specific to try and solve this, you're going to run into these issues. Um, and so this is just like a generally good thing to know about. Like overlapping stuff is kind of overlapping transparent things is tricky and it's also even if you do it correctly is expensive because you're you're having to render both things you're having to render okay everything behind it and then also render the transparent thing. the so, worst case is like um, a window looking through a window looking through another window right looking at a yeah i mean that, that could be like a texture. really exactly like that could be really bad uh even if you have that all working performance wise you're you're redrawing those same pixels over and over and over again when i worked on um, on game art uh for like a triple a game the the I mean, we specifically would give guidelines on the design side about like, you know, in this level, this window can't be lined up with that window because it's not going right. to draw right. Or it's going to just, right. the, the frame rate's going to drop if you're looking exactly. through too many transparent things at once. Uh, it's just a common, common. Yeah. Uh, so this is just something that, you know, 3D, 3D art, <laughs> it's, it's part of 3D art. Um, but yeah, if you can get away with using this alpha clip thing, you're going to, you're going to avoid having to think about these problems. Um, and it's not going to work for every every single scenario, and and we're also not saying like never use uh, alpha blending because it, it it looks great and uh, for certain things you just have to be aware of of the limitations. Exactly. So I just downloaded uh, from Sketchfab that uh, that house scene, and I'm going to go into Blender now, and I'm going to try to pull it in and maybe maybe possibly fix that problem. The the cool thing is that if I if I pop real quick back to uh, Blender, one thing that uh, or sorry to Sketchfab, uh, one thing that I really like is their viewer. I've talked about their model inspector before, so you can see like how the thing is set up. Um, this can be helpful in just finding which texture or which material is the one with transparency. So mm -hmm. I often will go to like 3D plus 2D view, and then let's say let's switch to the opacity channel here. And now it'll I mean, show the me. Sketchfab like, viewer is so nice. <laughs> it'll show the list. There it is. It, it's the one called. This was obviously made in Maya. Uh, this is called Lambert 14, which is probably the default name of the material. Um, so I'm going to be looking for Lambert 14 when I bring it in, uh, back into Blender. So if I go back to Blender here and I file import the GLTF, and I go to where I know you can't see this, but I'm just navigating to where I downloaded it, and uh, this is just called house scene. This is a GLTF I imported. There's a bunch of extra junk you don't need. I've, we've talked about this before, but let's turn on texture mode mm -hmm. so we can see it. Look at that. Pretty cool. Um, you might actually see the same transparency. Oh, even, even worse in some ways, uh, some transparency <laughs> problems in Blender. So uh, just to show you, that is not just a hubs. Uh, yeah, like symptom. like I said, this is a very very common thing. Just about how it it it's to do with just how modern computer graphics works. Like the 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 whole depth buffer thing is just has issues with the transparency. It's like a big trade off we made when we figured out how to do computer graphics well. Uh, this was not one of the things that we figured out, and so um, it's. There, there, there are there are techniques to do it better, but it's it's uh you have to specifically be um, accounting for that. So let's see. So what I'm going to do is is uh, go to the shading tab here so that I can see the different materials. And this tree, for example, is using uh, Lambert 14 underscore base color PNG, and you can see that uh, 
the importer managed to figure this out. Color goes into base color and alpha is going to alpha. So that's correct. However, you'll also see over here on the side the blend mode that it's using. Uh, I'm going to blow this up so you can see it a little better. Is alpha blend. And mm -hmm. that is what's making this look the way that it is. As soon as I switch this to alpha clip and then play around with this slider for a minute, like, oh, look at that. It just kind of fixed it. Uh, I also don't like that this model is like kind of glossy. That's why it looks yeah. so cloudy right now. I'm gonna yeah, it doesn't look great. It, like in, in Sketchfab, this scene probably just doesn't have an environment map. And so um, you don't, you, you know, it doesn't look glossy. But then when you apply the environment map that's in Blender right now, like this, this skybox, it's going to look a little weird. So this um, is actually that, that image over on the side. Um, and you can see it has alpha because of the checkers. In the background if you want to just turn on the alpha and only see that there it is and this is actually has a pretty nice crisp uh line around it i'm surprised mm -hmm. they made it alpha blend to begin with um this is like yeah i mean i think a lot of people may just do that without even thinking it's about a default. it default it may, yeah. may be the defaults and so so as um, i play with the clip threshold you could actually like clip into the leaves and stuff more there, there's there's not much here to affect so if there had been sort of a fuzzy edge yeah, you'd get more of this. See how, like, the edge is kind of grimy now? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, that's going to happen with just, like, anti-aliasing. Um, if you're making, when you're making assets, like, you're making your textures, um, you can account for this, right? So, like, if you know that you're going to make a transparent thing and you're going to use alpha clip, you would make it so that you actually have hard edges. Like, don't hard, have, don't have, don't have values that are, that are, that are transparent that way. Um, like, yeah, at like least these. not alpha channel. Yeah. Like, um, don't, exactly. Don't so feather like, your alpha. So like these leaves over here, which actually have uh, potentially a different material on them. No, they have the same material. Um, I just fixed those two by playing with this. See, like they were kind of mm, pull that in a bit. Now, the the fighting you're seeing between these different leaves is not because of alpha settings yeah, at all. Yeah, that's just that's just they're just all right on top of each other or like yep. intersecting the roof a little bit. And could probably. And we actually had someone asking about this too in, they could uh, be recently. Pulled out a little bit. Um, or... Just, just generally the the concept of Z fighting. I mean, that's basically like just when you have things like when you have objects that are just too close to each other. Um, when when you're rendering each of the pixels, you might get a different result for whether this object should be behind, like which one should be in front, which one should be behind, just kind of due to like rounding and stuff. Um, so. Uh, you know, you just want to have a little bit of space between objects. It's 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 a kind of an imprecise thing, but. If you're gonna have two things that are near each other, just just have a little gap. Um. Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of of uh, you know these these houses and stuff, I'm gonna do the same thing where I turn the roughness up, um, just so that uh, I'm not gonna see this like glossy looking thing. Uh, how many materials are in here? I don't know. It looks like yeah, there's not that many. Uh, if I just go through some of them and turn them up, I, ideally this would have more consolidated materials, um, you know, for, for, yeah. And there's also, we already, uh, we've I think covered on the YouTube channel. Yeah. We have on the YouTube channel stuff about how to optimize your materials. And, and some of this was reviewed too, I think, uh, uh, overlapping with those videos, but I think having a, a resource when someone is just asking about how do I materials, um, if we can point them at this video, I think this kind of covers all the, <laughs> all the things you might want to know about configuring a material in blender for, yeah. for GLTF export. All right, so that's that's kind of closer to what I want. Um, from here, I could just go ahead and do a straight export um, as is. Uh, I could just uh, go to export as GLTF. I'm not going to, uh, you know, you're not going to see this dialog cause, because of OBS and the way this works. But um, if I just, I'm going to go uh, export to the same folder where that house is living here. And I'm just going to call it, like, my export. Um and leave all the defaults uh, for the for the exporter, and then we are going to go back to hubs. I have this hub scene running, and I still have the old one there that came right right from Sketchfab with the weird blending problems. Um, and instead, I'm going to drag and drop the one I just made. Um, it's about 12 megs, probably because of texture files, but. Uh, Depending on how fast my internet is. Oh, there it is. Okay. I just need to resize it a bit. Uh, you can see this one is already uh, acting nicer. Yeah, way, First of all, it's, nice. not <laughs> it's not glossy, which is nice because like the sun was kind of affecting 
those surfaces in a way I didn't like. Um, and I'm just going to pin this in place so I can fly up to it. And now Alpha Clip saved the day. And it's cheaper because of mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's a little easier on your, your GPU, a little easier on, on rendering. So uh, Alpha Clip is your friend if you can use it. Now, it's never going to solve the problem of like, oh, I want you know, semi-transparent windows. Okay, well. Yeah, and, and that you just kind of have to solve by, um, you know, being creative about how you position things. And, and, and your design. Uh, I mean, you may yeah, decide, exactly. like on like on my building over here, I just don't use glass. Uh, I just leave mm -hmm. the windows open and it's fine. Um, but yeah, exactly. you may want that. I don't know. Um, or like on this car, maybe you want that. I don't know. Um, but, and then I think the only other thing we should quickly cover with transparency, just because we're, we're coming up on mm -hmm. going a little bit over time too uh just uh sp in spoke um you can now for images specify the transparency mode so uh -huh. um, there was a really common problem in hubs um a lot of people like to use um you know 360 photos as their their backgrounds and by default everything you bring into hubs or and spoke before all images you brought in were uh, by default um alpha blend they were considered transparent because we didn't know whether you were going to use a transparent image or not so we kind of just like defaulted to making it transparent so that people wouldn't be confused um what we do now though is anything new you create in spoke so old scenes will still kind of have the same behavior if you had created them in the past um but any new image element you create will by uh, will be default um fully opaque um and so uh when you're creating a skybox or something like that now you won't you won't have these issues with transparency anymore that you might have had in the past um, but you, if you specifically want transparency, cause you're, you're, you're making something that you need transparency on, you can now configure the transparency mode and it's just like the, the settings in blender. You have the, you have the, um, here's an yeah, image. Op you can set it opaque blend or mask mask is the same as uh, another clip thing is clip with yep. a, uh, with a cutoff value. Yep. So and if... we, we, we chose, we use the word mask here cause that's what the GLTF spec uses, but, uh, they, they all kind of mean the same thing. So I'll find some transparent PNG here. Um, on the old internet, uh, oh, this dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So th this guy, uh, I'm going to visit here. Let me copy the image, uh, location. Then I'll go back over here. I'm going to paste it over this URL, which is the is that actually transparent. Yeah. Okay. And right now it's set to clip. It's set to mask, right? Um, you could set it to opaque and then it'll just have a terrible looking background like that uh, because it wasn't meant to blend would do this, but you know, you're going to have the sorting issues if you. Right. And you, you may, you know, you like have a if couple you, of if these, you need that for something, then you need it. But um, you know, the, they, the they default not, one you should try to jump to is the, is the mask. Yeah. You, you might have some issues with that, but um, so, yeah, I mean, they're going to look fine as long as like, those are two separate objects. And so they're, they're, they're going to sort correctly there, but if you get them close to each other, um, kind of on top of each other where it's kind of going to be ambiguous where the center of the object is that's when you'll start start seeing issues yeah um, especially when they're like overlapping you know on yeah, top exactly. of each other this like is, that if, exactly if these are set to blend uh their pivot point is in the same exact spot so it, the computer's having trouble knowing well wait which one's in front I don't right know. exactly it won't it, it one of them is going to be in front sometimes and the other is going to be in front other times and so that's that's exactly when you're going to run into this issue but again, um, mask or clip, as we call it, uh, yeah. and adjusting the cutoff. See, see, like the, it had a little bit of a haze around him, or her. I don't yeah. Know uh, when I play with that alpha cutoff, I can actually like, kind of, uh, what do they call that in green screening? Uh, when you, it's not trimming. It's I forget. Adjusting like the bleed, mm -hmm. um, of the pixels like that. Um, so you can solve some some problems that way and get something better. I'll do the same on this one. So I turn it up like less of a haze around it. Um, so those will sort just fine now. Yeah, exactly. And so so now um, if you have some old spoke scenes that you had created and you were having issues with them, you can now go in and adjust them. Because um, by default, any old scenes will um, will retain their old behavior just in case you know we didn't want we didn't want to break old. It'll uh, probably be blend people's right? old That's scenes, but it'll be set exactly. It'll be set to blend by default. Um, but if you so if you have an old scene that you were having issues with, you can go back in there and change it now, and it should it should just work better. Yep. Um, if I were gonna if I were gonna off the top of my head put you on the spot, Dom, how hard would it be on this parameter to add a backface call? 
Like maybe you don't want to see uh, it. For images, yeah, no. For images, I think that would be pretty easy. That um, might be cool to have. Because I could see <laughs> wanting to do that for some special like decal or something where you don't, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't ever want to see the back of it. I don't know. Just an idea. Uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty easy. And then people have also asked about this for videos. Um, we don't have that right now. Um, I don't know of any. I don't know if video formats have alpha channels that the video formats that are supported in browsers. Uh, if there are any that also have alpha channels, not really. But if there are, it should be relatively easy to support. Yeah, it's really the codec. Uh, most codecs that that we support. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if channels. I don't know if they actually have alpha channels. Uh, there might be some that do, but I, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, this should work, I think, for 360 photos as well. Um, so just yeah. the production mode. 